Welcome to lecture number 59 of the series Unreal 5 for Arquis and in this lecture we're going to learn about the most important topic of the series and one of the most distinctive features of Unreal Engine and that is Lumen. So let's get started. First of all you need to make sure that Lumen is enabled. By default it is enabled whenever you create a new project but in case if you want to know how to enable or disable Lumen what you need to do is you need to go into settings, project settings, scroll down to rendering. and scroll down to global illumination okay you need to make sure that your dynamic global illumination method is set to lumen and you also need to make sure that your reflection method is set to lumen okay and that is pretty much it now it's time to learn what actually lumen is lumen is actually a feature in unreal engine which gives fully dynamic real-time bounce lighting it's a global illumination method that provides very accurate diffused indirect lightning okay this means that light bounces off a surface, picks up color of that particular surface and then reflects that color on the nearby surfaces. To demonstrate these technical details, here I have an enclosed room with a point light. Okay. And if I'll apply this material on this sphere, you can see some red color on the surface. Similarly, if I'll apply this red color on this surface, you can see this red color scattering in our scene. You can see this red color on the surface. Similarly, if I'll get closer to this sphere, you can see the reflection of this red color on this surface. This is actually called as diffuse indirect lightning in which light bounces off a surface, picks up color of that surface and then reflects that color on the nearby surfaces. Okay. We can see another example of indirect lighting in this scene. Let's go into the living room. And what I'll do is, I'll disable my artificial lights. I'll disable living room lights and I'll select my sun sky. I'll select the skylight and disable the skylight as well. Now I'll select my directional light and decrease the indirect lighting intensity. Okay. I'll select my sun sky and adjust the light direction yeah now you can see that we only have direct lighting in our scene our sunlight enters through this window and you can see that in this area okay but when i'll increase my indirect lighting value rays emitted from sunlight will enter through this window and this time they will not only light up this area but these light rays will also bounce off from different surfaces and then scatter around the entire room and this is totally real time okay i'll select my sun sky you can see that when i'll change the direction of the sunlight the shadows and every other parameters associated with that light will also change and there is absolutely no need to bake the lighting each time you make some changes okay this is very different from what we have in blender and many other 3d packages out there where we do have accurate bounce lighting but it is not real time. For example, in this blender scene, when I'll move my point light, you'll see that this is not real time bounce lighting. But in Unreal Engine, if I'll move my point light, unlike blender and many other 3D programs out there, you can see real time bounce lighting, which is game changer for 3D artists. Okay. Yeah. Let's now open our project and go through some settings we have for Lumen. I'll go into Outliner and I'll select Post Process Volume. You know what? Let's add some filters. I'm gonna add a Sun Sky filter and a Post Process Volume filter. Okay. And and I'm gonna apply both of these filters because in this video we're gonna need both of them. Let's select the Post Process Volume and I'll go into the Details panel. And down here we have some settings. First of all, make sure your global illumination method is set to Lumen. And under this drop down menu, we'll have some settings. First of all, we have Lumen scene lightning quality. Let's enlarge this window. And let me adjust the view. Okay, now if I'll increase this value, it will improve the lightning quality of the scene. This improvement is more noticeable if I'll go into the Lumen Scene Visualization mode. I'll go into View mode and I'll select Lumen Scene. Okay. Lumen Scene Visualization mode actually tells us how Lumen is affecting our scene. 
If I'll bring this value down to 0.25, we can see we have a lot of flickering in this area. But if I'll increase this value to let's say 4, you can see that we have a lot less flickering. Okay. Let's go back into the lit mode. Next thing here we have lumen scene detail. If I'll increase this value, it will actually improve my reflections. Okay. If I look at this surface, let me bring down the camera speed. Let me increase the exposure. Yeah. Right now you can see that we have this reflection of this white kitchen cabinet. Okay. But, but if I'll bring down the lumen scene detail value, you can see now we don't have that high quality reflection, but instead we have this blackish sort of reflection on the surface. But if I'll increase this value, you can see that we have much better reflections. And if I'll increase this to all the way up, we'll have even better reflections now. Okay. If you keep this number to somewhere around 1.4 or 1.2, you can see the weird reflection of the switch on the surface. So to keep all the objects in the loop, especially the smaller objects, I'll increase this number to four. Okay. Let's save everything. Next in here we have lumen scene view distance. This is actually the distance that lumen takes into account to light up the scene. We're just going to keep it as it is. So I'll disable this. Let's move down. Next in here we have final gather quality. I'll check this box. And let me decrease the exposure. Uh, let's keep it as it is and let's increase the camera speed. What this parameter will do is it will reduce the noise and flickering in the scene. Okay. So if I'll decrease this number to 0.25 and let me decrease the exposure. Let's keep it there. Okay. And as you can see that we have some weird flickering or noise in this area. Similarly, we have this weird flickering on the table as well. Okay. So to deal with this flickering, what I'll do is if I'll increase this value to let's say two, you can see that we don't have that weird flickering in this area. Similarly, if I'll move out of this room and have a look at the grass. Let's bring back the exposure. And let me adjust the sun sky. Uh, let's keep it as it is. Let's go back into the post process volume. And now if I'll decrease this value to 0.25 and look in this area, let me increase the exposure so that you can see the flickering in the grass. Now we can see that weird flickering in the grass as well. So to remove this flickering, let's increase this to four. And I can see four isn't enough. So I'll increase this to eight. Okay. Now you can see that we have a lot less flickering in our scene, but you need to keep one thing in mind that this move may significantly affect your FPS. Okay. If I'll show the FPS of this viewport by pressing control shift and H on the keyboard, you can see that right now we are having about 20 FPS from this view. But if I'll decrease this value, you can see that we have about 40 to 43 FPS. Okay. So just make sure you don't overkill this because this can significantly affect your FPS. Let's go back into the living room.
and I'll bring down the exposure. Let's save everything. Next in here we have maximum trace distance. This is actually the maximum distance that Lumen will trace to calculate lightning. Decreasing this value can also cause light leaking. Okay. To demonstrate this here I have an enclosed room and inside this room we have a point light. If I'll select and disable this point light and decrease the trace distance. You can see that light will leak or penetrate through these walls and enter this enclosed room. Okay. Let's go back into our project. Let's keep it as it is. And next in here we have scene capture cache resolution scale. We're also going to keep this value as it is. Okay. Now if I'll open this advanced drop down menu, we can see that we have some more parameters. First in here we have lumen seat lightning update speed. This actually controls how quickly lumen will update changes in lightning, especially sunlight. Okay. To demonstrate this, let's move out of this living room and and let's focus on this grass. What I'll do is I'll go into outliner and and I'll hide my sun sky. You can see that even when I've disabled my sun sky, we can still see some bright spots in our grass. And sometimes it takes a lot of time to disable completely. But if I'll go into the details panel and increase this number, now if I'll unhide my sun sky and hide it again, you can see that now it takes a lot less time to disable the sunlight completely. Okay. We're just going to keep the sunlight as it is. We're not going to disable it and keep this value as it is. Yeah. Next in here we have final gather lightning update speed. They both do pretty much the same thing. If this parameter doesn't help or isn't enough, you can increase this one. Okay. Yeah. Let's save everything. Next in here we have diffuse color boost. To demonstrate this, let's go into the living room. And what this parameter actually do is, it simply brightens the indirect light. Okay. When I'll increase this value to maybe 4, you can see some increase in brightness in our living room. And when I decrease this value, the brightness that we had in our living room will simply disappear. Okay. Yeah. Next in here we have skylight leaking. If I'll increase this value, it will leak the skylight and keep the scene from becoming pitch black. To show this here, I have an enclosed room with a point light. If I'll disable this point light and go into the post process volume. and increase this value, you'll see skylight leaking from these edges. Okay. Let's now go back into our project and keep this value as it is. Next parameter that we have in here is full skylight leaking distance. It is actually the distance by which the skylight will leak. For example, in this scene with the skylight set to maximum, you can see that when I'll decrease this value, you'll see the skylight in this area. But when I'll increase this value, You'll see ambient occlusion effect in these corners. Okay. Let's now go back into our project. I'll save everything. I'll disable this one and let's move forward. Next parameter that we have in here is lumen reflections. Make sure your reflection method is set to lumen. And if I'll open this drop down menu, we have some parameters. Let's move out of this living room. And let me increase the exposure. Yeah, I think this is enough. Let's search for lens flare and disable it. And let's now, now I'll search for lumen reflections. Okay. These three parameters. I'll check this box and increase the reflection quality to 2. I'll check this one as well and I'm going to select this one. Hit lighting for reflections. Okay. And finally, I'll check this box and, and I'll enable high quality translucency reflections. 
and now as you can see that we have much better reflections on our glass windows. Yeah, let me select this water surface and I'll press Ctrl B and I'll disable Nanite. Okay. Now you can see that we have much better reflections on this water surface. If I'll disable high quality reflections, you can see that we have some weird translucency reflections. But if I'll check this box, you can see that we have much higher quality reflections on this water surface. Okay. Yeah. Let me increase the camera speed. So yes, that's it for this lecture and in the next lecture, we're going to learn about path tracing. So yes, I'll see you guys in the next lecture.